Hi folks, welcome to my latest tutorial on creating this microphone stand for my Zoom H1 audio recorder. I'm going to show you how to model it in Fusion and then 3D print it and assemble it. Okay, let's jump into Fusion. We're going to start by creating a sketch and we're going to start by creating a circle. Select center diameter circle and uh, you can actually go on any plane you want. I'm going to go on the uh, XZ, I think, the lower plane. And I'm going to create a circle that's 70 millimeters in diameter. Hit enter. And next I'm going to create a profile. So I'm going to jump into the next construction plane, start with a line make that 45 millimeters and 90 degrees. Next I'm gonna create the thickness of the wall. I think four millimeters is fine. And I'm gonna finish the rectangle. So next are two little notches in this profile for uh, attaching the rubber band like you see in the picture. And for that we're gonna place one rectangle at the top, make it two by three millimeters and one at the bottom, like this. So next we're gonna trim out two lines we don't need for the profile, like so. Hit T for the trim tool and then just click on the lines, they're highlighted in red. Looking good. So the next step we will do is revolving the profile we made to get to our cylinder shape. For that we're going to use the, the revolve tool under create, clicking our profile, selecting the axis and hit OK. Next, we'll do a little tap on one on the bottom plane of the cylinder by creating a new sketch. That's going to be the place to mount the foot for the tabletop microphone. I just create a rectangle, center point or normal rectangle doesn't matter, and I'm not going to even measure it. Extrude it, make sure to set the mode to join. Like so, hit OK. That's fine. I'm gonna shape it by hand just that it looks good. Now we create a hole on the side. I'm gonna use M3 bolts because I got a lot of M3 hardware, the hole needs to be 3.2 millimeters. We'll do another circle because I want rounded edges and I didn't measure, so I make it just by doing a center diameter circle and using Q press pull to subtract it. Now we're going, going to tidy up the design a little, making some fillets here and there, making some fillets on the on the notch on the outside for the rubber bands later. Like so. Do the same step on the top. Like so. And also round over the edge a little. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. 
Good. Done. So here we're creating the notches for the rubber band to go into. I don't know if this process is the if most efficient way to do it. I had no idea how to do it. So you have to bear with me. Basically this is done by creating lines in a 45 degree angle when using the offset tool, hitting O or using it from the menu and offsetting the lines. What I really want in the end is to get uh, notches I can cut out from the cylindrical shape, like so. First one done. This measurement is totally freestyle. You can use it or use your own. I think in this design it came out a bit too tight. If I wanted to do it again, I would make it a bit wider. So make the gaps a bit wider because it's easier to get the rubber bands around. Now after that we use the extrude tool to cut our hooks for the rubber bands, like so. Select all eight cutouts by hitting Control and hit OK. Now this is looking good. We want the same cutouts for the second rubber band on the bottom where the we select our sketch again, highlight our sketch again, select the cutouts and use not offset, uh, use offset plane and hit 45, minus 45 millimeters because I know I made the profile in the beginning 45 millimeters high. If I now do the cutout with six, I'm getting the cutout from the bottom. I'm selecting all my eight profile planes again, and we're done. In this next part, I created a few holes in the cylindrical shape. You don't really need it, so I sped up this uh, process a lot. If you want to know more about it, just put me a comment under the video and I'm gonna explain it a bit better. But this is not really needed for the final design. So now that this is finished, we're going to have a look at the foot of my design. I start by creating a new uh, component and then drawing out the foot with a circle, center diameter circle and a rectangle. This is going to be the foot or the connecting part of the foot, the hinge, 
let's call it the hinge. It's going to be the hinge of the um, of the foot connecting the microphone stand. So I think I need three millimeters wide overlaps. It's fine on the, on the sides and make it the same on the other side. Now to cut it out, just made a rectangle, made it a bit wider than the gap. Let's try this again. 12.4 or 12.6, that's fine. Okay, the sketch is just for the cutting. So hide the already finished part, otherwise it's going to cut the part also. You just want the cut in the in the new part. That's good. Shaping it a little better. Like so. Adding some fillets, yes, always. <laughs> I'm a bit obsessed with this sometimes. Okay. So, this is looking good. Next, we grab a circle from the sketch palette and draw one circle on the plane. Now that the circle is finished, let's extrude it a little. I think three millimeters should be fine. Yeah, that's looking good. So, next, how to get the foot. Just draw a line. No idea how long it needs to be. Make it like 80, yeah, 80 millimeters. Should be plenty. Then, I want the foot a little tapered, so how to get this put a little tapered. You can put a center square, a center rectangle at the end, like so. Hmm. It's smaller, yeah, a little smaller than the circle. If you click and hold when you draw a line on a circle, it's gonna be tangent. That's looking good. And I think I'm not gonna extrude the square on top. Extrude by three millimeters or minus three in, in this case. Yeah. Now we got a first foot. How to repeat it. I'm selecting the three outer planes. Go to pattern, circular pattern. Select the axis and I'm gonna select the circle segment. Like three, three is fine. And that's good. So this is our foot. I'm gonna add some fillets and some round corners to this because I like to, but you yeah, actually don't need to. Okay, final part of the design. We need a little holder for the nut, for the M3 nut. Start this by doing a new sketch on the side. Polygon. Six sided polygon, of course. And for M3 nut, I need a radius for the polygon of 2.85. Let's draw a circle on the outside and extrude this by 4 millimeters. That's how high a uh, lock nut is. Add some fillets. And 
we're done. The last thing we need to do is to export our two pieces for slicing and for 3D printing. I would export every piece on its own so we can place them each separately in the slicer. That's what I'm doing here with Cura. It's my slice of choice. I have to rotate the pieces a little. That's easy. And now it's off to printing. Okay, printing done. Final assembly. I got my audio recorder my printed cylinder, cylindrical shape and my foot. What I need is an M3 lock nut, two rubber bands and an M3 bolt of course. Rubber bands go in like this. You hook it over one notch, go around the outside and cross it over and hook it into the other notch. And the recorder is going to sit in the middle later, I'm going to show you in a moment. So I repeat it on the other side. Sorry for going off camera, but it needs a bit, for, a bit of force to put in the rubber bands. And the recorder will put through the middle like so. Now it's nicely mounted against vibration and rubbing on the table. Put in the M3 bolt and lock nut. And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like it, give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. See ya.